Welcome to Community Connections. I'm Kathy Millett. Summer is just around the corner and it's the perfect time to plan your getaway. Joining us on the show today is Chris Majeski from Tours Plus. How you doing, Chris? Good, Kathy. How you doing? Awesome. Now, you've been on so many tours. You are like the expert. And how many times have you been to Fuji now? Fuji? Um, you can't even it, count how It's many. in the 20s. I think the last time I counted was 22, 23. Wow. It might be as high as 25. I'm not really sure. I know I've gone to the top 13 times, but after that, I, I kind of lost track. So, okay, so do you go to the top every time no, you go? Not anymore. And it's, it's, it's a matter of, it's a couple of things. Uh, the first 13 times I went, <laughs> one time with the Marine Corps, it was go to the top, go to the top. It's that Marine Corps mentality. It's a mountain, I got to climb it. Mm -hmm. And I kept doing that. Then I got older. And two things came into came really sharply into focus. One, going up is fine. Coming down is terrible. Um, <laughs> that doesn't mean don't do it. It yeah. just means be ready. To come, the descent from Mount Fuji mm -hmm. is hard. And it does wear after that many times on your ankles, on your knees, on your okay. hips, on your back. And uh, honestly, I tell people all the time, MCCS is a great company to work with. Mm -hmm. But there's no company in the world that's going to be like, hey, you climbed Fuji for us all these times. Mm -hmm. We're going to take care of your medical bills for the rest of your life. <laughs> They're not going to do that, and no, I wouldn't expect that. <laughs> so it comes to a point of that's one consideration, but mm -hmm. the biggest consideration is if I'm climbing Fuji and somebody has a problem or somebody mm -hmm. comes down before I do, they decide to leave, they don't know where I'm at. Yeah. And we have cell phones, and the cell phone stuff can be sketchy on Fuji. So I'll go up to Station 7, and then anybody that, if I do pass somebody on the way up, I'll stop at the top of Station 7, because there's like seven sevens, I think mm -hmm. it is. I'll stop up there and wait until the last person, you know, as I keep an account, goes past me. You know, I'll brief them, okay, you're, out, you're here, you're here, you're doing good, you're not doing good, you need to pick it up, you need to slow down a little okay. bit, so on and so forth, according to our times mm -hmm. to come and go. And then I go back down. Okay. And then I wait at the bottom of the hill. That way, I'm down before anybody else. If somebody gets down before me, they can say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and bounce, I'm going to leave, I'm taking the bus back, roger that, no problem, I've got accountability. Okay. So it's more of an accountability thing, but, you know, okay. when I started this job, 18 years ago, I didn't have this much gray hair and the back <laughs> didn't hurt every morning. So Okay, so you have, of course, every summer for two months, Fuji's open. That's uh -huh. the only time you can go. Yes. And when do you, the tours start? The tours start, well, this year we're picking up in July. Uh, July 4th through 6th. Okay. Wait, scratch that. That's the Miyako Island getaway. The July 5th through 9th is the first Fuji tour this year. Okay. So and it starts right after Independence Day. How many, how many tours do you have going to, to Fuji during this period? Eight. 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 So you have eight chances to go, and then that's it. After you miss these, you cannot climb again until next year. Right. So take us through, if people want to go to Fuji, what are some considerations they have to, to make? How old should children be? It's a long climb, so tell us about how many hours you're going up and how many down. Average climb time is five to six hours up, two mm -hmm. and a half to three hours back down. Okay. That's average. Mm -hmm. We usually arrive at the mountain by about 05. We leave the new sauna about 03. Uh, sleep on the bus is the best thing to do at that point. Arrive at 05, by the time you get your pack situated, your Fuji stick bought and everything taken care of, you'll probably start to climb right around 5.30, 6 o'clock. Okay. Uh, we depart the mountain at 1900. So if the average climb time is five up, five to six up and then two to three down, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at six to seven hours. Or seven, wait, five, six, seven, eight, eight to nine hours. We're there from 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. until 7 p.m. So it's plenty of time. Plenty of time. But there's always people come down slow, late, things like that. Okay. So what to be considering? Uh, number one, kids. Uh, the youngest I've seen go up unassisted, mm -hmm. as in not on daddy's back. Mm -hmm. Five years and three months. Wow. Kid was five years old, and three months. he did months. it himself. He did it by himself. Walk with dad. Though. And dad was one of those tall guys that's got like Long one step legs. and <laughs> the kid's like 15 steps to catch up dad's one. And, but dad also had a three-year-old on his back. Whoa. And that was the baby carrier. Now, here's the thing about that. Um, you guys know your children. You know what they're capable of. If you got kids that sit inside and play video games all the time and don't get out, don't exercise, don't do a lot of stuff outdoors, you might want to consider not plan to do all of Mount Fuji. That don't mean don't try it. Mm -hmm. Get out and get them, get them moving. But you got to be fit mm -hmm. for Fuji, at least to a certain extent, uh, to make it to the top. Uh, the guy that went up with his, with his three-year-old, he knew the kid. Okay. Um, he kept an eye on a very close eye. He did everything you're supposed to do. But when they get that young, if that kid's not feeling good, because you got action deprivation, you got mm -hmm. altitude sickness, you got all kinds of stuff that can hit you up there. Headaches, nausea, vomiting, I'm sorry, uh, involuntary personal protein spill, not vomiting. Okay. So uh, all of that stuff can occur. And if the child is like two or three they and they can't. can't communicate that, they just start crying. You're like, oh, you're crying. You just keep going and going and going and push through. And the kid gets sick. Yeah. 
Also, you've got a uh, trait that's, that's very strong in certain ethnicities. Mm -hmm. It's a sickle cell trait. Mm -hmm. Go to the hospital, get yourself checked out, make sure you don't have this. We had a tour guide uh, at one point that had this trait, didn't realize it. She got to about station eight and she dropped. Whoa. So but she, she was got, okay. No, she's okay. She's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, she's okay. But she got the donkey ride back down. Okay. What should we wear? Um, boots? What do you recommend? Climbing Mount Fuji, you know, some people think, oh, it's a nice little park. You know, walk up there like it's Fiji Falls or mm -hmm. whatnot. And you know, they'll show up in shorts and a t shirt and an APHIS bag clipped to their little belt loop with a D ring. I, I laugh at those people because <laughs> it's funny. Um, Long pants, mm -hmm. boots, good sturdy hiking, climbing shoes. Tennis shoes are a bad idea. You want something with some grip on it. Okay. Um, preferably something high topped because you don't want to get rocks in your shoes because hitchhikers are bad. Uh, you want to dress in layers. You know, I tend to wear a t-shirt, undershirt, and a long sleeve shirt and then have like a sweatshirt with me as well. And that's just personally me. I don't carry the big bag because I'm not going, or the big jacket I'm not going all the way up to the top of the mountain. But even when I did, it was generally like a, a like a long underwear shirt and a flannel shirt. Now, there's a lot of stops up along the way. What mm -hmm. can people expect at the stops? And they should buy a stick. There's a souvenir a that you stick, buy yes. at the bottom, and yep. it's, a, it's a climbing stick. And wh when you go along the top, you get stamps along the way. Right. And this is like your achievement medal. So this is something that uh, you, can, you earn. So it's mm -hmm. a great souvenir to have. And so what can they expect at each of these stops? Station 6 is just a guy out there hanging on a map. When you get to Station 7, it's uh, seven station sevens. And there's food, there's drinks, there's benches. Uh, the price of food goes up <laughs> the higher you go. Because somebody's gonna carry that stuff up the mountain. Yeah. So you carry a, you know, a six pack of water up the side of the mountain and you go to sell it, you're gonna wanna raise the price up a little bit. But uh, you can carry all that stuff up yourself though, it makes it cheaper. But there's food, drinks, there's, there's the stamp stations. There's, uh, you can buy oxygen. Okay. Little compressed oxygen bottles. You can pick up uh, gloves, bananas. I mean, all kinds of stuff up there. And, and at the very top, there's restaurants that have like ramen and curry and stuff. And that's the goal to get to the top. To the top. And a lot of people try to get there for sunrise. Right. We don't do the sunrise climb. We get there at five. The sun's just about coming up. By the time you bounce about zero six, it's already up. Okay. But doing the sunrise climb, if you want to leave out early, you know, we don't provide transportation for that. But you can go up there and do that. And then if you want to catch a ride home early or catch a ride home with us. If you're part of our tour group, you can do that. And if you're going all the way up there, definitely bring a camera because yes. the view is awesome. You have to. You don't bring a camera, you're, you're failing at some <laughs> point. Here's the thing. Here's the way I put this. People come to Japan, and you come to Japan, and I'm just going to go ter typical stereotype man, woman. Mm -hmm. Man comes to Japan. What do you want to get as a souvenir? I want to get a sword. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the cheap stuff you see all over the place. I mean, you can actually get a real Japanese sword with license and all that kind of stuff, old, new, whatever. You can do that. Start at three grand to work your way up. Wow. All right. Um, women may want to, I want to get a beautiful Japanese kimono. They're expensive too. The entire trip to Tokyo, Mount Fuji, the new Sano, the whole thing that we charge um, is cheaper than a sword. Nice. In a lot of cases, cheaper than a kimono. And here's the thing. You can get a kimono. I'm sure you probably have kimono. Mm -hmm. And you bought them and you wear them. You earn that kimono by working and making money and blah, 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 blah. Same with the sword. You earn that sword because you went and bought it with money you earned at work. You buy a Fuji stick, it has one stamp on it. Then you start climbing the mountain. Yeah, you're going to pay two to 300 yen per stamp. But every single stamp you earn, you earn. Mm -hmm. So that Fuji stick, to me, is the best. If you're outdoorsy, you like doing stuff outside, that is the best souvenir to get while you're in Japan because it's not just I bought a sword it's I accomplished something yeah. I climbed the biggest mountain and a volcano in <laughs> Japan to me that's the best souvenir to get that's really cool oh and by the way just for all your listeners out there that doesn't mean women don't want to buy swords and men don't want to buy kimonos <laughs> I understand it's 2014 <laughs> but I'm just saying mm -hmm. um that's why I said stereotype but uh it's something, it's a must do when you're here. Right. To me, it, it's one of those big bucket list items. The big term is bucket list now. The bucket list items, I got to climb Mount Fuji. And hey, you do. If and you're outdoors and you like doing that kind of stuff, yep. you know, you're a military community, so you tend to be sort of what outdoors. And the tour is about uh, three or four days long? It's five days. Five with days. With coming long. and going. Okay. Generally, it's, it's like uh, the average is leave on a Wednesday, come back on a Sunday. And here's a cool thing, too. Uh, you get two and a half free days in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So you can look around, you want to go to Disneyland, Disneyland. Disney Sea, mm -hmm. you want to go see Ueno, you want to go to Rapungi, you want to go out to, you know, 
any place in, in that area you can go out and see that kind of stuff, then you go climb Mount Fuji. Next day, you can relax on the plane on the way home. Now, one thing you can do with your Fuji stick, because people are like, oh, I don't want to take the Fuji stick on the plane because it might break mm -hmm. and the baggage. We got you. You bring that Fuji stick to a tour guide's room the next morning. Mm -hmm. and he'll, the tour guide, he or she will set a time. I generally set between 9 and 10. At 10 o'clock, by, by 10 o'clock, you bring me your Fuji stick. Mm -hmm. I've got bubble wrap, tape, and brown paper. I will tie your Fuji sticks up in a big bundle mm -hmm. and use them and take them over as check baggage. Okay. One Fuji stick might break. 30 Fuji sticks isn't going to break. And the, and the airlines is kind of like, oh, Fuji sticks, got it. Because okay. they see a big, long package like, hey, what's going on with that? Mm -hmm. Fuji sticks. Oh, okay. And they know it's a tour group, group tour, so it's fine. Okay, great. But uh, we'll get them shipped back and over so here for you. And so you only have eight opportunities to go. Eight. So when is the first sign up? The first, well, the first tour goes on the so Jan, uh, July 5th. Mm -hmm. July 5th. Uh, the sign-ups call Tours Plus six four six three five zero two. They can uh, let you know. Now, what I tell people is call Tours Plus, ask for Marina because mm -hmm. she's the international coordinator, and say, "Hey, look, I'm looking at doing the Fujis. I want to get on such such a tour. Can you take my name down? Okay. Put your name on the waiting list. That way, as soon as the prices come out, we can say, "Yeah, it's going to cost this much." Boom. We'll start calling people. Be like, "Hey, we got it open. You want still interested? Still interested?" Still interested? Come on in, sign up, and you're good. Okay, and that's not the only tour. You have a ton of tours coming up. Ton Let's of tours. Let's talk about some of the other ones coming up. Well, one thing we got coming up is the 22nd of May mm -hmm. through the 26th of May. It's Sumo and Disney. The people want to just go see Sumo. It, oh, well, it says Sumo and Disney. You don't have to do Disney. All you have to do is come in and say, I don't want to do Disney. So drop that part okay. of the, the tour out, and you're fine. Drop that price off, and you're fine. And then you go out, and you get two and a half, three days in Tokyo, and then you go see a Sumo tournament. And the cool thing about sumo is, you know, you see them so much in Japanese literature and the TV and this and that, and these big stars, and you walk over by the sumo arena during a tournament, and they're everywhere. Just diddy bopping down the road, big huge dude in the kimono, <laughs> and you're like, not the sumo guy. <laughs> and a lot of times you walk up, and you're like, sumo can I take a picture? And they're like, oh, yo. Take a picture with the guys, and they're just really friendly people. Wow. Um, amazing, amazing. And it, it's funny because you get, oh, why would I want to go see those big fat guys, you know, <laughs> push each other? Dude, you think they're big fat guys? <laughs> you think they just push each other around? There's technique. There's unbelievable strength involved in this. Sumo is a phenomenal sport. It's, it's unbelievable. It's not Japan's national sport for nothing. Mm -hmm. It's been around for centuries. Sumo is an amazing thing to go see. You want to kind of get into the culture and smear it on you a little bit, <laughs> that, go see Sumo. Okay. And, I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal thing. And then, of course, it's Disney and Sumo. Okay, and so when is So the first two days, we do Disney. Mm -hmm. Then you do Sumo after that. Okay, and, and if you don't want to do the Disney, you can just have free days. Right. And if you don't want to do Sumo, you just want to do Disney, you can drop the Sumo and okay. just do Disney. And when is that again? That is the 22nd through the 26th of May. And when do they have to sign up by? They need to sign up ASAP. Okay. The cutoff date is April 28th. Okay. By that point, no more sign-ups. Okay. The tour's already a go. We got enough people for it to go. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking, well, if the tour doesn't go, I was going to ruin my point. The tour is a go already. Okay. We have enough. And what is the price for, the price for that? The price for that is check over at Tours Plus. Okay. I don't want to miss both the price. As a tour right. guide, I do the stuff. I don't handle the prices. Mm -hmm. And they, sh they fluctuate because of yen rate okay. and flights, things like that. So to get a good solid price, not a bum scoop, 646-3502, call Marina okay. or call the front office girls, and they will get you squared away on that. Okay. And what are some of the other tours? Oh, uh, geez. We got uh, things like uh, Vietnam and Cambodia. Those are coming up. We looked at uh, Sem Reap going over there. Yep. Uh, Sem Reap is where Anchor Watch at. Yep, Anchor Watch. Um, that was the focus of that. We got things like Sapporo Summer Getaway. Okay. Um, Sapporo is renowned for the snow festival, for snow. but it's a very beautiful place, very nice place, great city. Uh, definitely something to check out. Uh, we do run the Sapporo Snow Festival too in February. Mm -hmm. That is a must. Yes. Um, you been to Sapporo? Yes. How's the food? Oh, awesome. It's all about crab and beef and dairy. And lamb. Lots lamb. of lamb. I didn't try the lamb. You didn't try lamb with Sapporo? I didn't try lamb. You were too busy eating to beat the crab, huh? The crab, yeah. It was with Sapporo. <laughs> the snow festival is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. the, the, the sculptures are amazing. And the food is just uh, ramen alley. Unbelievable. The awesome Sapporo food. beer, the beer part <laughs> with the all you can eat lamb yakiniku, buff, uh, yeah, lamb yakiniku, and all you can drink. Ah, uh, just phenomenal. But that that was passed already. That was in uh, yeah, that was, was January, February. February. Okay, that yeah, February. But it's gonna. The Every cool year, thing yeah. is, we have February is once a year, mm -hmm. so we have that tour once a year. Mm -hmm. So it's passed this year. But if you wait, you can do it next year. Yeah. 
Okay. It's amazing how the seasons work like that. And what else do you have coming up? Taipei City Tours coming up. Okay. That's good. We're looking at uh, July 24th to 28th for Taipei City. We've got uh, Singapore, mm -hmm. August 7th through 11th. We've got smaller outer islands, things like Miyako and Ishigaki. You can check with Tourist Plus for those. We've got uh, Yanaguni Island Getaway. We've got a Hong Kong tour coming up. Hong Kong tours August 21st to 25th. Okay. Um, all kinds of stuff coming up. And what's great about going with you guys is going on your own, you can try to do research and try to stumble around and, and find your way, but when you're with a tour guide, you know you're not going to get lost, you know someone who knows the way and knows the best places to take you. Mm -hmm. So I'd feel safer going with a tour guide. Well, you know, the thing about it is it, when we go, the guides themselves aren't actually the tour guides. Mm -hmm. But it's like I tell people, I've been to Tokyo enough times, I'll give you some information about Tokyo. I have some base knowledge on Tokyo. I can tell you about this, that, what are fun things to do. Because I have people like, hey, you know, it's our free day from Disney. We got the kids. We don't know what to do. At Ueno Park, mm -hmm. Ueno Zoo, the National Science Museum, those are great places to check out. Um, you know, when it comes to China, yeah, you can stumble around China all you want. We have China. We have Shanghai tours coming up. We have Beijing. We have three cities, Xi'an, Shanghai, Beijing. But it's so much more convenient to hop on a bus and go mm -hmm. and let the tour guides handle that kind of stuff and your tickets and everything. You know, the big thing about Tours Plus is I tell people this all the time. And it sounds like, oh, it's the company line. It's not. Mm -hmm. Because we were never given direction on this. Mm -hmm. This was basically just the way we kind of think of business. For the active duty especially, okay, maybe you're getting uh, rotated out. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're getting shipped off to Iraq or Afghanistan. Not so much Iraq anymore, but still. Uh, you go into a deployment, mm -hmm. all right? You leave it in three months, two months, whatever. You got one last vacation with the family before you get deployed. So you put that in our hands. We're not blind to that. We recognize the fact you just said, hey, this is my vacation with my family. As military members, we don't have a lot of time to do stuff like this and build those ties. You just gave me that mm -hmm. to take you on a tour. And you trusted me to do this. So we keep that in mind all the time. Either local tours, we think like that, but especially the international stuff, because that's family time. You're giving us that. So we want to do our best to make sure that time with your family is stress-free. I had a, a customer on my November Disney, not last year, but the year before that. And as I'm doing a headcount on the bus or check-in, I hear him on the phone. He's talking to the one of the camp commanders. I'm not going to mention the camp, but he's talking to one of the camp commanders. He goes, sir... Let me tell you something. You're thinking about doing Tokyo Disney? You need to do that with Tours Plus Aww. because we didn't have to worry about it. They handed us the boarding passes. They handed us the Disney tickets. They had everything set up. The hotel was done. The planes were done. The buses were done. Everything was done for us. We said to show up and have fun. Oh, that's an awesome compliment. And that is what we're here for. You know, I tell people, if you look at our tour guides at the end of a tour like this, and you're like, man, I'd love to have your job. You have a great <laughs> job. Then we did our job because you saw none of the background stuff, the stuff of is this squared away, is that squared away, running out, getting to take a squared away. You didn't see that because we don't want you to see that. We want you just to go out, have, have fun, fun, and spend time with your family. That's what your focus should be, not worrying about the hotel or worrying about the bus or worrying about your tickets. That's our job. Let us do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Not For more problem. information on all the dates, they can contact the website, right? Yep. All sure right. Can. Thanks again. Not a problem. For more information, be sure to check out that website at mccsokinawa.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more MCCS TV. Stop by with your friends and family for a night to remember at the Butema Habu Pit. Our talented chefs will prepare your choice of steak, chicken, or shrimp right in front of you. Teppanyaki meals come with soup, salad, grilled vegetables, potatoes, and rice or bread. Enjoy a wonderful night out at the Habu Pit's Teppanyaki Grill. It's the best tasting show in town. For more information, visit mccsokinawa.com. Whatever adventure you're looking for, MCCS Tours Plus can make it happen. Guided international vacations, sightseeing tours, discounted tickets to local attractions, or even resort hotel reservations for special occasions. Call us today to get started on your adventure.